Hey guys, so this was our war against DSVG, a very good alliance which we have fought before, and I believe we narrowly lost last time. So we came into this ready for a fight. I brought Claire to this node even though it's Mystic Ward. My plan was actually, I was expecting him to hit into my block, um, to land those stifles on me, and then I was going to dash back, and he was going to go unstoppable, and then I was going to rely on Mystic Dispersion from those Unstoppables one at a time to get to my L2 and turn off all of his buffs. As it happened, I landed two Nullifies in the first combo, so I didn't need to do that, but that's why I think that Claire was a better shout here than some other options, because I knew that she'd be able to control him. See, here you see that does happen. I get that Mystic Dispersion twice from two different Unstoppables. I step back directly into the L2, and we're keeping him under control. So at this point right here, um, I believe that I kind of realized he wasn't going to play ball. And so I step... Okay, no, I don't yet. Now, um... I just finished it out into poison mode, step backed, and then used this because even if it didn't kill him, it would power steal to keep him away from an L3, but I was also pretty sure it was going to kill him. I don't like taking his L2 um, in block damage, so I was blocking a lot there to just stop him from throwing it so that I could just control it until I got that last bit of power. So next up we have Gladiator Hulk on pretty much a throwaway note, honestly. I don't ex think they expected a kill from this in any way, shape, or form. But, you know, Hulk can catch you um, because he can go unstoppable at odd times. You know, a lot of them are fairly predictable, like when he's at 100 crowd frenzy, like right here. But, you know, he also has those random ones that pop up, sometimes in the middle of his heavies. You're supposed to be careful. I do still have class advantage though. Killmonger is very tanky. I feel like I'm in pretty good shape, but I also did that very stupid thing of punishing his L1 when he was very obviously unstoppable. Sometimes I feel like those prompts um, catch you off guard and they feel almost unfair. That was not one of those times. That one was completely fair and I just messed up, which is part of why I don't like fighting Gulk, because I feel like this happens. But, as you can see, still above 90% health. Not a problem. So the next fight we have here is actually Korg on Encroaching Stun, a node that I end up taking a lot. Um, I boosted pretty heavily here, because although I've used Apocalypse against this node before, the last time I used him, I used him against Crossbones, who was actually a uniquely bad placement, because Crossbones does not counter armor, and I think some people forget that Encroaching Stun increases your armor, so even if I had gotten stunned in that fight, I probably wouldn't have taken a lot of damage. However, um, Korg is significantly more dangerous, so even with Apocalypse's long specials, because I knew that I was going to have to play around his Rock Shield to avoid taking too much in Thorns, and because it is power reserve, and I know that often to get him to throw his special 2, I have to trigger dex and thus make his special 1 unblockable, I knew that there was some risk here. I was cutting that one a little close, but I was ready to step back into it if necessary. I preferred not to though, because again, if I can get through this without triggering dex, I'm going to. Still, though, that's only two specials, and I actually let the first debuff expire completely. I didn't bother with the heavy, and we already have him down. Or, sorry, we don't already have him down, but we have him 80% <laughs> down. Good lord, I'm glad I can't jinx myself retroactively. Anyway, I'm letting that fall off. No, I'm not. Okay, so I did throw one heavy because I figured that the thorns damage was worth it. And I'm actually glad I did, because notice how the encroaching stun timer came back there right at the end. I threw that L1 slightly too early, and so if I had not thrown that heavy, I would have done less direct damage on that L1, and I might not have killed him, and I might have gotten stunned. I'm pretty sure I would have lived through it, 
but better not to test, right? So next up we have Spider Gwen. Can't stun her. Can't control her evade until she gets to one bar of power. So I'm just playing shortened combos. Four hits like you see, expecting her to evade and backing off. But backing off carefully because I don't want to go, oh, she evaded and then accidentally parry her and completely, you know, get rid of the point of <laughs> shortening my combo so I don't get hit in the face. But at this point, I have true strike up, I have counter punch, I am making sure to hold block as soon as I dash back so that she runs into it and I'm at no risk of parrying. But this fight is under control. I considered turning off parry for this, um, just to be safe, because this was an incredibly close war, more on that later. But I'm not terribly comfortable fighting certain characters without dexterity, especially given that I would need to counter her L1 to get True Strike. So I just decided to leave it on and be really careful, because I was actually more concerned about accidentally parrying against this Terax. I was not at all surprised to see a missed Sig 200. I did know this was a 5-star, so I knew it should go down quickly, but I figured that I was going to be backed up instantly. That's why I use that big power boost. I know that against a 5 star smaller health pool, it's going to be more effective, and I want to have plenty of specials. So, to be honest, I actually wasn't sure which, um, which of her curses I wanted to use in this fight. I've seen a lot of people very successfully use Curse of Blood against Terax. Um, especially if they're running suicides, obviously, it heals for more, so you can stay topped up well. But, personally, I tend to prefer using the Curse of Poison or Plague because of the power control, because it just means that he has access to fewer specials overall. Notice there I hit into his block to try and keep him backed up. The most dangerous part of this fight is if you end up in your own corner when he still has power left. So this is what I mean. I know that I can be super aggressive and I don't have to worry about baiting out a special before throwing my L2 and backing him up. I think after that first one, when I saw how close he was to his back wall, I decided to just block after all my specials, hope he didn't throw his at all, because I saw how much power I was getting back. I knew I could just chain these until the fight was over. I would be doing plenty of damage, I wouldn't push him red, and that's how it worked out. So next up we have Mole Man on power from afar. Now, I'm not saying that this is the smartest matchup right here, because from the beginning I was planning on using an invulnerability boost. But Mole Man's special 3 does not do anything fancy, it doesn't kill you instantly, it doesn't apply a bunch of scary debuffs, it just does a bunch of damage. So, against Apocalypse, um, if you're using an invulnerability, against anyone if you're using an invulnerability, you can live through it. Now, I didn't need the Magneto, the White Magneto pre-fight to land the stuns. Apocalypse does that anyway, since he stops Mole Man from being able to purify, which is why that poison is still there, and why the weakness stays there. But I wanted it for the extra attack. Because I was fairly sure I was going to blitz through this. You can see he's already about three quarters of the way down when he finally throws his first special three. But he also had it before that, right? And he could have thrown it right away, and he might have already been back to another one by now. And then I only have one charge left on the indestructible boost. So I wanted to have as much attack as possible here. That's a about as high as you will see PIs without suicides being on. But, as long as I used the heavy to refresh those debuffs, because again, the more debuffs you have up, or the more of his special four debuffs you have up, the more damage your specials do, I knew I could get up to another special, and I'd drop him. Had to wait for somebody to move me to Sentinel, but this is the Vigorous Assault node. I know that that's not going to come into play, because... Sentinel does not have any healing unless he throws two L3s. And if that happens, you have other problems. I figured that this was probably a trap node, like maybe for 
Maybe other alliances have tried ramping Guillotine 99 here for an Apocalypse boss, and then um, have just timed out. Because he is a pretty beefy boy. Um, but I actually figured with Claire, his analysis would work in my favor. Um, I healed there a little bit to just get some block damage back, but once his analysis gets up, I know that I'm just going to stop landing critical hits, but that's actually a good thing because the global is protect. And that means that the most dangerous part about using Claire on offense right now, where she triggers protect and you are forced to go in for intercepts, is just not a factor. And I'm not worried about um, doing damage because I know that if I just stay in Hellfire mode, even if I'm doing almost nothing on my basic hits, I'm going to do, you know, a few tens of thousands every time I throw one. See right there? Every hit of the L2 is doing almost 3,000 direct damage. That took him from 74 to 60, and I still have over three and a half minutes. I know that I'm probably going to spend some time um, baiting out specials. I'm okay with that. I just need to get a certain number of L2s off in the five minutes, and he'll go down. Now, I forget exactly where in here I do it. I did try and block some of the beams from his L1 on purpose, because my theory was that because he can proc his effects through block, I was thinking, oh, well, you know what? Uh, I know that the heal block is on the first hit of his L1, and the armor breaks come later, it would actually be kind of nice to get um, an armor break through block when I have this much health, and he doesn't have that much attack on this node, and I was like, I'll just heal up for it. Didn't end up working. I think it might be here? No, okay. But didn't end up working. Not a single armor break showed up, but that's okay. He's already down to 34%. We're at roughly the halfway mark of the five minutes. There's no danger in this fight. Now, I easily could have given this fight to someone else, um, and I considered it, but, you know, the more coordination you put into the end of your war, the more potential for stress there is in trying to get things coordinated, especially when people have jobs. So even though I cut the video there while I said I waited for somebody to move me up to here, I knew that was all I had to wait on. So I took all six of these fights in one, like, 20-minute session, and I didn't have to um, wait for anybody else to actually, like, get ready to do a fight. They just had to move. Like I said, I don't normally assign anybody uh, nine fights in one war. We tend to spread it out a little bit more, but this just worked out nicely. There was a bunch of stuff that Claire, Apocalypse, and Killmonger could take. So, those of you who are keeping up with my war videos have seen me take this exact Cosmic Ghost Rider with Tigra recently. It was not a fun fight. Um, I don't recommend it. His heavy animation is very quick, not ideal, but I know that Claire can land poisons and thus can turn off Stunning Reflection so she can then um, safely stun him, and she can also take advantage of Stone vo Vulnerability because he's not a large champion. And so one of the most dangerous things about this particular node, which is why you'll see somebody like Thing or Terax here a lot, is that if you use someone who turns off Stunning Reflection, then it can actually be dangerous to stun them, because stone, Stun Vulnerability means that they take way more damage, and it probably will trigger Protect, and all of a sudden, you have to intercept. And, you know, against like Terax, intercepting usually isn't that difficult, but you often want to stay away from him too in certain spots. But against somebody like Thing, who loves to stutter step and block, and sometimes um, will be at 15 charges and so you can't intercept him, you can run into problems. But I honestly think that Cosmic Ghost Rider's something of a gimme here. <laughs> I timed that comment well. 
because he's not large, and so if you use somebody like Claire, it is so easy to control him. That right there is why we run 5 out of 5 limber, ladies and gentlemen, because um, on the off chance that you do something silly, like be a little bit more slow than you normally are in countering a special attack, it is really nice to have that parry stun last for a very short amount of time, and I was actually able to get my block back up. So, this is yet another MODOK fight um, where I get hit by the heavy. I haven't dueled on this one for a while, honestly, because Killmonger is just such a good counter for him that he kind of does the work for me. I would like to not get hit by that heavy again, so I'm going to practice that a little bit. You see Limber starting to take off. I know I don't have many more of those openings. Um, I did take a bit of brute force there, waiting for an opening. The degen can absolutely kill you if you're not careful, but I figure now I have true strike and counter punch up. Fight's basically over. The reason that I've gotten hit on this node recently is because I probably have gotten a little cocky about it. I need to watch that. But at the same time, I know I'm not going to be taking an Apocalypse boss with Killmonger, so losing a little health here isn't going to matter. I'm not going to heal him up. So that one kind of surprised me. Um, I was expecting him to like throw a heavy or give me an opportunity f to intercept so I could push one or the other of us over a bar of power. It didn't really happen, so it kind of brought us back to the start of the fight where I'm pushing him to a bar of power, but when that happens, you just hit into their block because it will push them to a bar of power. And then you're back where you need to be. Took some more degen damage, still above 50%. Yeah, he's done. For anyone who hasn't seen me do this, even though I don't need to, I like to use counterpunch to remove the protection charges because it counts as an intercept. Anyway, overall, like I said, this was an extremely close war. It was probably the worst war of the season for both of us. We did end up coming out on top. It was 11 to 12 overall, but I think it was within two kills for like 18 hours of the 24. They died a lot right away, then we gave up silly deaths. It was just neck and neck the whole time. I think Vega likened it to it. It's like we were saying, no, I insist, you win. No, I insist, you win. <sighs> Sometimes those happen. But I'm really glad that when I ended up taking more fights than we normally assign to me, that this war turned out this well for me. Hope you guys enjoyed. Maybe learned something. Catch you next time.